Well guys, what an amazing weekend this has been. Uh, we started off for a couple of nights on a campsite and then we've ended up here in the middle of the forest on an old RAF base. So we had a, a little bit of a chilled out morning. What are you wanting? Binoculars off. Worse than the dogs. Uh, we've had a chilled out morning. We've been around the, the farm shop and bought some sausage, sausages and bacon, bread, mushrooms and all my two other bits and bobs. Uh, a nice little campsite here. It is called The Mile. Uh, <clears throat> we're just actually north of Pocklington in North Yorkshire so uh, we've just well we're just gonna have a, a copper now I've got some uh, first of the year's mince pies uh, and then we'll have a walk down into Pocklington and have a walk around there so I'm gonna take the camera down uh, just to see what there is and then uh, we'll be chilling out this afternoon I should think So we're out with the dogs and uh, just while we're having tea or on Google Earth just looking for a few footpaths and what we did notice were up this footpath just appear there's some buildings and it looked like in in, in the front of the buildings was some, some aircraft uh, like a jet or something so we're going up there now to, uh, well, to have a look at it and, and, and report. Uh, Yeah, but we'll make it towards the uh, the woods as well. So uh, no, but it, it will be interesting to see whether this aircraft is a is actually there or not. So uh, I'll ask the local uh, guy at the campsite and see whether he can give us some more info on it if I can, if we see him tomorrow. See what I've got to put up with. So yeah, the pink house, in the middle of the woods. What's that all about? So it's Sunday morning, uh, we've had a, a nice relaxing weekend. Uh, we're going to leave the campsite today and we're going to push closer back towards Selby. And now we start filming, the dogs just like decide to have a drink then. So yeah, we're going to push back to Selby and I think we're going to spend one night just while camping somewhere uh, just to have another night out uh, Helen's got one of these trail cams and uh, I think we just want to test that another night 
so yes, yeah, we we've just had breakfast. We're gonna clean and tidy up and, and do the usual things. I've got the uh, toilet to empty and and that as well. So uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll be leaving maybe around about lunch time, and then we'll find some place to uh, to park up later. So we've had a nice couple of days here. Uh, it's been nice just to like not do much at all. Uh, you can see the setup I've got now with the with the waste tanks. So we've got the uh, the two waste tanks there side by side, the, the the grey and the black. And obviously we feed down this pipe. We've got the concertina uh, snake system and. Uh, that folds down into the uh, the manhole or whatever you want to put it in. It's weighted down to stop it from shooting out if need be. I'm pumping water in there as well just to flush it out. So it works as water's going in. Uh, we'll just leave that running for about five minutes and, and that just flushes everything out, uh, out of the tank. And then I'll connect it to the grey. And once it's on the grey, we can flush the pipe out, and that gives it like a, a good clean through. So, uh, and again, we'll flush the, the grey tank out as well. So, yeah, one of them jobs you've got to do every every well, 10, 14 days or so. I've just seen back at the campsite, uh, you, you've seen me emptying the tanks from the storage tanks and I suppose there's pros and cons with uh, both systems. I mean a cassette, I suppose you can just, you know, empty every day and, and I don't know, uh, a large holding tank, we only have to empty every 10, maybe 14 days. So there's benefits and uh, well, pros and cons with them both, but uh, I don't know. What are your thoughts on it? I mean, what what's you guys got? Uh, like I said, the olden tank, uh, we, we've got well two tanks, one for the black, one for the grey, and they're both 96 litres. The grey, if we both have a shower, then obviously we, we, we've got to empty that the next day. But the black, like I said, we can, we can easily do a week uh, or 10, 10, 14 days for the black tank. So, uh, you know, you just need to find a either a campsite or a manhole cover. And obviously the manhole covers are quite common. So, uh, but yeah. So we've just arrived at Skipworth Common. It's just north of Selby. So we've come here, uh, we're gonna spend the night in the car park here. Uh, We've picked this area because it's full of wildlife. There's supposed to be deer, uh, horses or ponies, and uh, I think there's some cattle here. So uh, it looks a really nice area. We've just left the dogs back in the camper because it is midday and it is quite warm. So uh, we're just, me and Helen's just come out. We're just having a walk around. Uh, it was a, an old World War II uh, airfield. I think down in the southwest corner they had a where they had the ammunitions. So we were just having a walk around, 
seeing what we can see and then uh, we'll have this tea and then we'll make up for another walk with the dogs later. No idea. <laughs> no idea. Got air corn in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> So according to Google, I think this southwest corner were where they kept all the ammunition. So these could be all the you know, ammunition buildings, I don't know. Got another building just here, as you can see. So what's, what's your thoughts uh, on actually living campus full time then? Do you think it's a good idea? Do you think it's a bad idea? Uh, I think I've always wanted to live in a camper full time and travel, work, pay as you go lifestyle. Helen, I don't think we're too sure, uh, but I think over the past sort of like few months that we have been together, in the camper uh, she's sort of like I think she's warming to the idea and I think she's actually now seeing the benefits uh, you know we've got loads of people parking in the car park just up there and you know they disappear for like half an hour they come back they get in the cars and obviously they're going home and yet we're we've got all day here you know what I mean we've got all evening here as well so I mean there's no rush to get back uh, we're going back to his friends tomorrow just to help them with, with a little bit of decoration tomorrow uh, but there's no rush there's no nine till five you know the, the, there's no commute and things like that so um well up to now we're living very cheaply so I mean what what's your ideas I mean do you guys like living in camper vans full times or are, are you trying to are you trying to get that lifestyle or, or maybe you're traveling I don't know but uh, we did have plans this year of two long trips uh, before the initial winter trip uh, where we were hoping to, to go south but uh, I don't know whether I've said this but I'm, I'm, I'm selling my house at the moment and uh, well I'm trying to sell my house at the minute and uh, it's just not selling at all so uh, it's been on the market now since just after Christmas uh, maybe January, no let me think, January, February it was March time I think I put the house on the market and it's just not selling 
So, uh, you know, all our plans of having all this money spare to go travelling and that has just had, you know, well, it's just not happened. You know, we imported uh, EB in 2015 and we started work uh, April 2016. So by September, EB was in a position where we could actually live in the vehicle, even though it, it, it was nowhere near complete on the inside and some of the, the mechanical and the electrical side of it weren't tip top or weren't how we wanted it. So we're still working on that, as, as you know. Uh, but no time scale neither, you know, it, the, the first initial build took six, seven months and I had to get the vehicle up to what I class is like 70%, uh, 70% complete uh, because I knew that the last 30% were going to take some doing it, we're going to take time and I had to return back to work, uh, earn, earn some money, uh, so yeah, it's... Uh, it's been a long journey and this year we thought we were going to be like most of us we thought that we were going to be off and, and you know adventuring and so on and it's just not happened this year uh, thankfully I think the the weather has been kind to us uh, certainly the the first three month of lockdown were very nice <clears throat> You know, Helen's just walking off and uh, I'd best keep up with her, I think. Enough of me waffling on, let's see if we can find these deer. This looks like we, uh, one of the places where they kept the munitions. You know, steel doors on the uh, on the building. We've got this high high embankment around the edge as well. So and I think just over there we've got uh, we've got some sheep as well. Build on the common during the Second World War to train pilots for bombing raids over Germany. So it's very hard to uh, believe that although it's all really nice and peaceful here now, that this were training camp in World War II for the bombers and it's like I mean, you can see there's buildings, there's bunkers, and there's concrete as well everywhere. And uh, you know, you get these lovely areas, and it's it's hard to believe that you know this was a training base for the World War II bombers. I just you know, um, again, we, we've just stumbled across this by chance. Uh, we just tend to use, like most of us, either park for nights or search for sites or just on Google Maps, just actually look for a green area somewhere in between you know A and B and, and we park and or we look for a parking spot within that area and we've come across this by chance uh, didn't know what we were coming down here for like I said we're, we're just going to spend the night here and uh, obviously then you, you pull up you see the, the the signs in the car park explaining what this area were for and then yeah But yeah, it's a, it's a massive area, really massive area. I mean, we've been work, walking now for about two hours and uh, we are on our way back to the camp, uh, to the car park. But yeah, it's a massive area. So uh, I'll label it up in the description as well where we are so you can, uh, you can check it out for yourselves. It's amazing, some things what you don't plan, you know, you just, end up parking somewhere and it, it turns out to be 
an amazing place so yeah. one thing what we do occasionally when we're out and walking in places like this we we uh, we do the geocaching uh, we're not serious at it we just sort of like you know find the geocaches leave us mark and then you know that's it but uh, we're just using this app now which is uh, navigating us towards this uh, this geocache up in front so geocaches have been going for centuries to be quite fair watch that tree stump uh, but yeah they can be uh, entertaining for kids and basically the, the, the little uh, canisters what are normally hidden away you know there can be a tree tree trunk or 52 meters and uh, yeah and you find them you can leave your signature in there you can go on the app and then say that you found it and then uh, yeah you move on to the next one Helen's just going to go in and retrieve that one. I right, say so it's a bit of fun, just something to do, passes on time. Uh, sometimes they come with information about the area as well, which is uh, yeah, it can be quite cool. what an amazing weekend uh to say we just needed to get away and just chill uh we've done exactly that we we spent two nights on a, a campsite uh where we the old purpose for to empty the toilet uh the waste tanks uh but also to just chill out not worry about where we're parking or anything like that just to chill out uh and then i was way back to uh Selby, we've called off at uh, Skip With Common, uh, an old RAF base, uh, what is now just covered in, in this massive forest. The wildlife is unbelievable. Uh, we've had a great night's camping just here. Uh, there's a few other camping uh, stopover places, what we've seen, which are absolutely fantastic. Uh, and at, this morning, on, on the morning's dog walk, I mean, I've seen loads of wildlife as well. Didn't manage to see any deer, but everything else apart from deer, we've seen. Uh, we've been just on the wood pile, just over to the side here. We've been watching partridges uh, sunning themselves this morning, which was quite fun. Uh, so yeah, it, it's it, it's really nice. And to walk around the forest this morning, and early morning forest, obviously you get the smell of the forest. And in the distance, I can hear the A19 and the reason why I can hear it is because obviously people are commuting to work and they're on the Monday morning jaunt to work and I'm here walking around a beautiful forest so uh, yeah it's, it's been amazing so so listen thanks again for joining us here and uh, well we'll see you on the next adventure thank you